So before we go and look at examples of evaluating definite integrals, we need to establish some important properties for these integrals that are going to help in simplifying this process. So here we go. To begin, I want you to note that we're going to let k be some arbitrary constant, some real number. So the, per the first property is the order of integration. So if we have a definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, we can flip the bounds here by multiplying the integral, the definite integral, by a negative. So this is equal to minus the integral from b to a f of x dx. So we'll find this property super duper important when we start looking at u substitution. Next we have the zero width property. So this is the zero width of an interval. So if we have a definite integral, say from a to a of f of x dx, notice that this interval has the same bounds. Our interval has zero width. We have the same bounds. So this means that the integral is going to be zero every time, all the time. The next property is the constant multiple property. So we're very familiar with this property. If we have the definite integral from a to b of a constant k multiplied by the integrand f of x dx, to help in simplifying this process, we can pull that k, that constant, to the outside of the definite integral to help us simplify the evaluation process. Next, we have another good old friend, the sum and difference property. So here, if you have the integral, the definite integral from a to b of f of x plus or minus another function, continuous function, g of x, dx, again, to help us in the simplification process, we can rewrite this as the sum or difference of the two definite integrals. So we can say that this is equivalent to the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx plus or minus the definite integral from a to b of g of x dx. The next property is additivity. So this is telling us if we let Let's let C be some element in the open interval from A to B. So this means that there's some real number C that falls in between the bounds here. And so what we can do is take a definite integral from A to B of the integrand f of x dx, and we can split this integral, this definite integral, up into two pieces. So we can think about this as the integral, the definite integral from a to c of f of x dx plus the definite integral from c to b of f of x dx. And so this property is going to be important, particularly with area, when you have some region under the x-axis. The next property is the maxima and minima inequality. So here, if a function f has a maximum value, and we'll say our maximum value here is the max of f, and if the same function has a minimum value, and we'll call that the min of f, then the following inequality holds. Then the minimum of our function f, evaluated at the bounds b minus a, is going to be less than or equal to the definite integral from a to b of the integrand f of x dx, which will be less than or equal to the maximum value of this function f, evaluated at the bounds, so b minus a. So what does this mean? Well, this means, in other words, the integral on the closed interval from a to b is never smaller than the minimum value and is never larger than the maximum value. And last but not least, we have the domination property. So here, 
we want to begin by let's suppose that a function f of x is greater than or equal to a function g of x on a closed interval from a to b. And what the domination property tells us is that then the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is going to be greater than or equal to the definite integral from a to b of the function g of x dx. And so this property makes logical sense looking at these inequalities. What this is telling us is that if a function f is never less than the function g on a closed interval a to b, then the integral, the definite integral of f of x is also never less than the definite integral g on that same closed interval a to b. Now the last thing I want to point out to you is an important note. And I want you to keep in mind that the value of a definite integral depends on the function, not the letter representing the variable. So what does this mean? This means that the definite integral from a to b of f of x uh, dx is the same thing as saying the definite integral from a to b of f of t, dt. So it's the function f that matters. That's what the definite integral depends on, not the variable. The only thing that you want to be mindful of is that the variable of the function matches the variable of integration. If you do not include the differential, you have nonsense. So always make sure that you've got your differential.